have any idea where she may be? No. None whatsoever? No. Okay. The man now charged with sexually abusing and murdering Maddie Soto is in the hot seat as detectives try to get him to confess and reveal the location of Maddie's body. Plus, detectives hitting Maddie's mom with a reality check. You have not shown me one bit that you prioritize her over him. And that sucks. I have the most revealing moments from the newly released interviews. Thanks for joining me for Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. We've heard a lot of the interviews from Maddie Soto's mom, Jen Soto, and Stefan Stearns, the man now charged with murdering and sexually abusing Maddie for years. We've heard those interviews, but this is the first time, aside from body camera footage, that we're seeing both Jen Soto and Stefan Stearns being interviewed by detectives. These interviews took place in late February and on March 1st of this year, as detectives tried desperately to find Maddie. They believed early on in the search for Maddie that she was dead because of surveillance footage they said they found that showed Maddie dead, strapped into the passenger seat of Stearns' car on the morning of February 26th. Police brought Stephen Stearns into the Orange County Sheriff's Office on the Wednesday of that week, February 28th, to confront him. How was your name? I'm getting very good sleep. I'm likely for getting maybe four hours. Right. Do you need to use a bathroom or anything? Um, no, I think I'm all right. Thank you. Okay, just give us a few more minutes. I'm just waiting for somebody else to come, okay? Okay. Now, the detectives start out. They're very cordial with Stearns, and why wouldn't they be? They want him to feel comfortable. They read Stearns his rights, and he agrees to talk to them. At times, the audio drops out, and that's because Maddie's name has been redacted. The detectives start on that Sunday, the day of Maddie's birthday party. Did you come to the party? Uh, no, I was not. I was on my way up at that point. Okay. Um, so the party ends. Did you pick them up from the party? Someone must have dropped her off. Okay. Uh, she was there when I got there. Jen asked me to make sure that the shower and did her bedtime routines, which she did. She was already on top of it, so mm -hmm. nothing to do there. Okay. Uh, what time do you think you got back in Kissimmee? Uh, what time I got into Kissimmee? Yeah. Maybe 8 o'clock, 83 ish, something like that. And I apologize if you've answered these questions before. Uh, it's just like I said, we're coming into the game late, so I may ask you things that you've already answered probably three or four times. Well, I apologize and I apologize as well. My memory is not super reliable on time frames. I've been medicated for the better part of a week. Okay, that's fine. What do you think medicine for? Uh, anxiety mostly. I've been having some money troubles lately, anxious stuff for that. So. Okay, well, been, hopefully your money troubles get better. I've been medicated on Ativan since probably Saturday. Okay. Now keep in mind as you watch this that the detectives already know the answers to the questions they're asking of Stefan Stearns, at least most of them. And they know that he's not going anywhere. He's not leaving that room. They will eventually tell him that he's being charged with the sexual battery of Maddie and possessing child pornography, and they're going to take him to jail. The detectives asked Stearns about something that's really boggled the mind of many people following this case, the sleeping arrangements in the home. What are the sleeping arrangements? Uh, he sleeps in her bed. Okay. Um, the, did she sleep in her bed Sunday night? Uh, no. Uh, I was just back. I had been away for a couple months. We in the same bed together, so... Mm -hmm. We get some serious sleep, um, so she said no to that and suggested that the guest room upstairs had a big enough bed. So some snuggle cuddle time that that would suffice and Jim get to sleep in peace. Okay. So you say snuggle time, what what does that mean? Like to be alone. She is extremely dependent. She does not like to be alone at all. She needs human presence around her. Basically. Gotcha. We've been trying to wean her off of that, but it's been difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the detectives asked Stearns about where he claimed he dropped Maddie off at school that Monday morning on February 26th. Was she by herself when you dropped her? Was her friends there? Yeah, she was by herself. She said she was going to go find her friends and hang out, wait for them to show up. Okay. Um, it was still early. Where did you go after that? Like, did you see her walk towards the... I saw her making her way towards the direction of the school, but she was like kind of shuffle step. She was meandering her way there. She was rummaging through her backpack for something. Uh, I assumed she was looking for headphones, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but as it turns out, she did leave her phone at home that day, so she might have actually been looking for a phone. What was she wearing when she left, or when you dropped her off? Uh, green hoodie, um, black shorts, black or blue, black, sh- black shorts, um, white Crocs. White Crocs. The Maddie Soto case is probably one of the best examples of how every parent has to make sure the people they're allowing around their children are safe. Truthfinder.com is a website that can help you do just that, and I'm going to show you how. I put Stefan Stearns' name into truthfinder.com, and I came up with his past addresses and his age and relatives. But most importantly, the murder charge he now faces in Maddie's death appears right there in the results for criminal records, along with the sexual battery charges he faces. Truthfinder is great because it will show you the sex offenders who live in your neighborhood. Right now, Crime Fix listeners and viewers can get 50% off of confidential background reports. Just log on to truthfinder.com slash LC Crime Fix to save 50% and start accessing information about almost anyone. Do everything you can to keep you and your family safe. Now, this white Crocs are important, of course, because detectives found one of Maddie's white Crocs in the condo and one in the trash. They then moved on to Stern saying that he got a flat tire that day. Where'd you get a flat at? Uh, somewhere along 192. 192 is a big road. It is, and honestly, it all looks the same to me. So I've been asked, do you remember what plaza you were next to? What color? And I'm like, I'm ADD as it is, and I was in a medicated fog for the better part of the week. I, lucky I remember what color I'm wearing right now. Now, this will become important later because that flat tire led to a tip from a man saying he saw a man matching Stearns' description changing a flat that Monday. That tip led to the discovery of Maddie's body at a farm. The detectives asked Stearns about Maddie on the way to school. Going back to school, um, how was she like on the car ride there? Calm down, sleeping. She does that. How often have you? <clears throat> how often have you? Um, not often, honestly. I, this might have been my third or fourth morning school run. I'm not normally the one to do it. Detectives later said that Maddie was dead in the passenger seat of Stearns' car when he left the condo complex with her that morning. The sheriff would also say they had video of Stearns taking trash out that Monday morning. And the detectives asked Stearns about taking out the trash to see what his response will be. Did you take any trash out from the apartment? The night before, I think I did. I'm not sure. I took took the trash out at some point, but I don't remember if it was the night before or it was the morning of. Sometimes we get trash bags piling up by the door. Love to see them. Is there uh, like a common trash place, or like is there take the trash to? Yeah. Okay. Is that where you took the trash out? Yeah. Okay. When you had her backpack. Presumably her school computer was in her backpack. Mm -hmm. And you described her wearing a green jacket, some kind of dark colored shorts, and white crops. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can confidently tell you she did not go to school with her backpack. How's that? Because we found it in the trash. So, 
Stefan, here's what I'm asking you and pleading with you is to dig down and do some soul searching. He's got kids, and this little girl's out there somewhere that we need to know where. And I really, really, really think you can help us. Okay. I mean, you want to get something off your chest. I just don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm pleading with you. I don't know. Maddie's backpack was found covered in paint with her laptop and one of her white Crocs in a dumpster. The discussion then turns to Maddie, talking about having a crush on a boy at school. Has she ever talked to you about boys? A little bit sometimes. A little bit. Has she ever, because I asked Jennifer the same thing, has she ever disclosed to you about being sexually active with boys? No. Do you know she's ever been sexually active with anybody in the past? Not that I'm aware of. You saying she's not allowed to have boyfriends or anything like that? She can have crushes. She likes them. Mm. All right. Have you and her ever exchanged, like, do you guys exchange text messages? How do you guys communicate? FaceTime. Um, she'll FaceTime me at night when I'm not around uh, before bedtime to say goodnight. The detectives then decide it's time to confront Stearns with evidence that they found on a Google Drive connected to his phone. The state attorney says the drive contained more than 1,700 images of Maddie engaged in sex acts with Stearns over the years. Remember what I said earlier. They're not asking any questions that they don't already know the answers to. And from what I understand that you gave the deputies consent to look through your phone. You didn't? Okay. Um... And you voluntarily gave it to them so they could bring it here to do the extraction and stuff like that. Okay. What do you think was on the phone? Uh, text messages. Text messages. Mm -hmm. Emails. Old stuff. Pictures? Oh, yeah. Pictures. What kind of pictures were on there? Uh, Training card pictures, lightsaber pictures, Disney pictures. Do you have a Google account? Yeah. Do you save pictures to your Google account? Sometimes. Yeah. Or is it automatically? I know sometimes phones sync to a cloud and. Yeah, I, I think it I think it backs up to Google. Here's where I'm going to be brutally honest with you. There's on your phone. And I'm pretty sure you know what some of those pictures are about. You're, you're a very intelligent person. And I don't want you to discredit yourself by saying you don't know about all the pictures that are on your phone. You understand what I'm saying? to the list of pictures? So you're wanting an attorney? 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. That can happen. Um, I want to let you know you're not free to leave. Okay. You're being detained. Okay. Do you want to know what you're being detained for? Yeah. Capital sexual battery and possession of child pornography. So we are going to step out. If you need anything, please tap on this door. Okay? And there's going to be detectives outside that will be able to assist you. Okay. Stefan Stearns asks for a lawyer. He's done talking. And he's been told he's being charged with serious sex crimes. After the detectives leave the room, the gravity of the situation, the seriousness of the charges Stearns faces, appears to hit him. That was a pretty long sigh. Crime scene techs then come in and tell Stearns that they have a warrant to collect his DNA and to take photos of him. So she is going to take some pictures of you as well, like your hands, and we're going to ask you to take your jacket off so we can get your arms and all that stuff too, okay? Stearns had scratches on his hands that he said came from changing that flat tire. Now at this point, detectives still haven't found Maddie's body. Another day goes by, and on Friday, March 1st, Detectives bring Maddie's mom, Jen Soto, in for a video recorded interview. The detectives clearly haven't ruled out Jen Soto as a suspect, and they start by asking her about that Sunday night when Maddie had celebrated her 13th birthday party earlier in the day with her grandparents. I just started a new job last week or the week before. Okay. Where's that at? Walt Disney World at um, Coronado Springs, the front desk concierge. Okay. I, uh, I was finishing up my last day of, no, it wasn't even my last day of training. I was still in the middle of training. Sunday in the middle of training, I couldn't, I couldn't miss to go to her birthday party. So I went to work. It was my family all day. She had the best day. She was so happy when I got home and I saw her. I at my house around 8.30 that night. I wasn't home. Um, she got dropped off alone. About 10 to 15 minutes later, Stefan showed up. Now, this interview with Jen Soto is three hours long. Jen Soto said she arrived home around 1030 that Sunday night. I realized I forgot to take my meds. And I said, you guys, I need a good night's sleep. I need to take my meds. Um, I sent them to sleep upstairs in the best in the guest bedroom so that I could get a good night's sleep. Um, that we all sleep together in the same bed together but not the easiest person to sleep with she rolls around she punches she kicks she'll we have a king size bed and she typically sleeps on one side and she'll end up on my side when we wake up okay. so I asked her I'm like no please I need a good night's sleep um, if you guys can go upstairs and let me sleep um, I had asked Stefan to take her to school in the morning now, at one point, Jen Soto breaks down when she realizes her birthday is the next day. They're discussing the password on her phone. What's your password on it? Uh, 030288. 030288. Okay. Is that a birthday? My birthday. It's your birthday? Yeah. Your birthday's tomorrow. All right. Today's the first. So Jen Soto said this would be the worst birthday ever, and she cries for a short time, and then she recalls her conversations with Stefan Stearns that Monday morning after he said that he had dropped Maddie off for school. While I was waiting for my blood work appointment, and he let me know, oh, I'm so sorry, I left my phone at home by accident. Um, 
school. Everything went great. She got up super early, got up really quick. Um, she slept most of the way in the car. Um, I asked her multiple times if she wanted McDonald's, but she said no. Because um, that was the plan, was that they were going to stop at McDonald's that morning and go get breakfast. Right. He said uh, that he had gone to the vape shop and they were closed and they didn't open. So he, he waited there for a while and left and then said he was going to go back later. Um, when I saw him at the house, everything was normal. We were chatting, we were talking, he was acting normal. He was sitting in my computer chair, just messing around on his phone. While we were hanging out, he mentioned something along the lines of, oh man, I've been avoiding this phone update for a really long time. I should probably update it now. And I said, do it, don't avoid it, just get it over with. And he updates his phone and then tells me, Oh my god, I don't know what button I just pressed, but I just factory reset my entire phone. And I said, how the hell does that happen? That gives you options now when you reset your phone? He goes, yeah, apparently I, w I wasn't paying attention and it just I pressed, I just pressed the button and it happened. And I said, oh, that's unfortunate. That sucks. Um, later on, he tells me he's going to go back out, and I think this is around... 12 o'clock. Of course, the cops think that Stefan Stearns factory reset his phone on purpose to get rid of those photographs. Now, it was on that trip out that Stefan Stearns said he got a flat tire. That flat tire, as I mentioned earlier, would lead to the discovery of Maddie's body at a farm because a man called in a tip saying he saw someone matching Stearns' description changing a flat at the farm where Maddie's body was found. That happened after this interview with Jen Soto. He told me he was going to go out cruising that night to go look for her. And I said, I even questioned that. I asked him, are you sure it's a good idea? You should probably sit tight. Um, let's just wait to see if she comes home. Um, and he said he was going to take a drive out. I had completely forgotten about him wanting to take the drive or that he actually did it. And it wasn't confirmed to me until the following day where agents came to the house and we sat in the car for a good amount of time and I noticed the chair was adjusted. And I said, did you drive my car? And he said, yeah, remember I said I was going out last night. To That's right, you did say that. Now on Wednesday of that week, Jen Soto said that she and Stern spoke to reporters. She said she contacted a news station the evening she reported Maddie missing. But she said Stearns cried during one interview, actually breaking down and sobbing. At the time, I thought he was truly heartbroken and not that he had done all this shit to her. Like, I, I look back at shit now, I'm just like, he was fucking lying. He was fucking faking. What else has he been lying to me about? I know he's like a master liar and manipulator because he's, he's done it to his parents and he's told me and shown me the lies he's done to his parents. But I don't know why I never thought, n not me. The lies are about money, they're about where he's at, what he's doing, like what's he? Yeah, all that. Um, to his parents? Yeah, he's stolen money from his parents. Um, they used to have a few thousand dollars hidden in like a closet for emergency fund kind of thing. And a few, during COVID, he sold like, he wanted RC cars. See, if he wants something, he's gonna get it. Uh, no matter what. Now, one thing that the detectives can't seem to understand during this interview, and they try to get Jen Soto to explain, is her primary concern appearing to be for Stefan Stearns and not for Maddie. For instance, she suggested that Stefan Stearns get a lawyer. I started saying to him, like, I think they're focusing in on you. Like, we need to call your dad and I think we need to get you a lawyer. Um, I feel like they're focusing on the wrong person. And he kept saying the same thing. He kept repeating what I was repeating. That um, they're focusing on the wrong person. Um, they're wasting time there. Um, huh. 
how did he feel when you said he needs a lawyer? He didn't believe me. Like, when I told him, like, don't you see forensics is closing down the house? They know something, or there's something, like, they know something. Something's happening. They wouldn't be locking down the house this way if, if, if they didn't have suspicions of something. But in my, I wasn't thinking, I don't know why I wasn't thinking him. Like, I was just like, no, they've got the wrong guy. The detectives just can't believe this. And they turn up the heat on Jen Soto about this later in the interview. The police have showed you their hand. They said, Stephan, we want your phone. Stephan, we want to talk to you. We're going to lock down your residence. You can't go back inside. Me? I don't care if it's the love of my life sitting next to me. I don't care if it's maternal grandma. If the police come and take my mom's phone and my son's disappearance, I'm not going to offer my mom a lawyer. That's nuts to me. That to me shows you prioritizing stuff. Because at that point, you became more worried about him being falsely accused than any. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Whether or not that's what you felt, does that make sense? People having lawyers is their constitutional right. That is a thing that everybody is afforded. But for somebody who's going through what you are going through, to offer him a lawyer leads me to believe that there may have been a conversation, there may have been knowledge, or there may have been some inclination that you had, whether it be his involvement, her location, or something to where in your mind there's guilt. I promise you, like... Because you offering him a lawyer is very weird. I know. I know. I... That was still me under the assumption that... I think at one point... No, at one point you guys interviewed me and when you guys showed me the picture of her, I believed the sexual stuff, but I didn't want to believe that he had done anything evil to her. I'm like, no, what if she... What if he did this stuff fine, but what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her i still wanted to believe in his i i believed him i believed his whole story so i was just like i, I kept repeating that part i'm just like what if what if she did get dropped off what if she I got abducted what if she's missing um but that was me assuming that you guys had the wrong guy i wanted to think he was a good guy still but clearly he's not after everything you guys have told me and have shown me i know he's the worst person on this face of the we earth know that right now. now. We know he's a piece of shit now. You know. But you didn't know that then. I didn't. Then you offered a guy who the police suspected suspected of kidnapping, abducting, assisting the disappearance. You offered him a lawyer. And then we don't have to round table that. You went back to you, what you just said is the sex stuff is fine. It's not fine. The detectives also pressed Jen Soto on her sleeping in the same bed with both Maddie and Stefan Stearns. So if you guys are sleeping in the same bed and she's in the center, you've woken up and they're snuggling, they're under the same blanket, they're not under the same blanket. No. But just like- She's got her own blanket. She's spooning got her own. for what? Mm. How, what is snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling, spooning, big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this and she would be right here in his, in, in the nook. Okay. Um, How do you guys sleep? You guys sleep clothed, unclothed? I sleep clothed. clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets? Yes. Everybody? Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. Then the questioning turns to Jen Soto, allowing Maddie to sleep in bed alone with Stearns, something virtually no one can understand who's following this case. She explained when these so-called sleepovers began. Sleepovers before. Yeah. Like, you want to watch movies and eat snacks? Can we do that? I'm like, no, no, no. We can all watch movies down here together. We can all sleep down here together. Um, up until, I mean, up until, up until June. Together all the time. So we were always, she would sleep in the middle. I would sleep on this side. He would sleep on the other side. Um, it wasn't until June that he got his own bedroom and I sent him upstairs. That's where the that's where the requests for sleepover started. 
Um, and I, t- I kept telling her, no, 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 no. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, but eventually at some point, like, we, just, we really want to watch, I forgot what movie it was. They really wanted to watch something and I was really tired. And I said, okay, fine. Um, go ahead, but this can't happen often. Um, Honestly, I I think I can count on one hand how many times that's happened, and it hasn't been many times that I've allowed her to have a supper party with him, to be alone in a, in a bed with him. I'm usually around all the time. I Up until two weeks ago, you know, I was pretty much at home all the time living on disability. Uh, if I wasn't at home, just, you know, I was substitute teaching, but I was substitute teaching primarily at her school or at the school close by, but I'd make sure I'd get out around the same time and I'd get out in time to pick her up and take her. So she was with me pretty much all the time when she wasn't at school. Um, so yeah, after... When he's not there, where does she sleep? With me. She never sleeps in her room? No, always okay. with me. Quickly, do you know, and you may hate the question, but do you know, do you have any idea? We currently have upwards of probably 200 people working on fire. Right, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is involved, the Kissing Police Department's involved, St. Cloud Police Department, Osceola County Sheriff's Office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FBI. Yes suspicious circumstances so anybody who is somebody is involved yeah so regardless of the circumstances those people don't get to go home those people don't get to go back to their families those people don't get to live their lives and go back to their primary jobs of course. I know the sheriff has probably expressed to you that's his number one priority I'm sure the Cassini Police Department's expressed that to you our detectives this isn't something that's going to stop or go away yeah. Right. Anybody who knows something, anybody who may know something, will be brought into a room, who will be talked to, whether they're guilty, whether they're innocent. Because our number one priority, our jobs have kind of stopped on any other things we have going on until that's fine, because that's the most important thing anybody has going on right now. But with that, a lot of people are going to feel that whatever happened, I can tell you, and I know Pete, detectives have expressed to you that the thought process at this point is this is a homicide investigation. Yeah. Based on the evidence I've seen, based on the videos I've seen, I do believe with that being said, and the reason I tell you that not to be an asshole no. is because the thought process with us leads it in a different investigation, a different way. Meaning, whatever has already happened. Right? We cannot change what happened most likely on Monday. We cannot change the fact that I believe Stefan killed her. Right? All we can do now is find her as quickly as possible. On the, the 2% chance we're wrong and that she is alive, that's phenomenal. Right? That's the best thing that could happen. On the chance that we are 100% correct and she has passed away, finding her now versus later will bring closure to your family, will bring closer to everybody, regardless of how it happened or why it happened. Meaning, if you have an inclination, if you know where she's at, if his father knows, that doesn't mean those people get held accountable for what he did. It doesn't mean those people get held accountable for knowing what he did. It means we close out the investigation at the You know what I mean? So a lot of times we go into rooms like this and we ask people questions. We say, hey, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? And there's this fear of what happened already happened. I can't change that. So I'm not going to insert myself with knowledge because it's going to make me look bad. Regardless, at this point, I murdered her, right? He victimized her. He ruined her entire life from childhood until now. I think that there's probably some sense of guilt. And my fear is that sense of guilt 
is causing you to not want to assist in the location of her, not because you're a bad person, but because there's that sense of guilt that what was happening was happening under your roof, and now, by her being found, brings that all to your plate, and it doesn't. Oh no, if I knew anything, I would so tell you I want to So there are things, and the reason I say these things, and again, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but the reason I say these things is there's been a lot of things you've said, and a lot of things I've kind of researched between the Fox 35 story, between your initial statement to the police, a lot of things have changed. The initial statement to the police was you've watched her get dragged, you watched her leave, you knew exactly what she was wearing. Can I, can I tell you Absolutely. my thought process on yes, that, or where I came from with that? I was handed this form, and I'm like, where do I start? What do I write? And somebody say, somebody said, tell them what you saw. And so I started with, I saw. And then I wrote out what I wrote out. But it wasn't until later, I was like, wait, I didn't see her. I assumed that I saw her. I assumed that I heard her, but I didn't. In reality, I didn't see her. I only saw him, and I heard something in the kitchen, but I don't know who that was. Which we've talked about today, but I guess my concern, there's other concerns. Right? Mm -hmm. You were nervous. You the police have showed you their hand. They said, Stefan, we want your phone. Stefan, we want to talk to you. We are going to lock down your residence. You can't go back inside. Me? I don't care if it's the love of my life sitting next to me. I don't care if it's maternal grandma. If the police come and take my mom's phone and my son's disappearance, I'm not going to offer my mom a lawyer. That's nuts to me. That, to me, shows you prioritizing stuff. Because at that point, you became more worried about him being falsely accused than any. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Whether or not that's what you felt, does that make sense? People having lawyers is their constitutional right. That is a thing that everybody is afforded. But for somebody who's going through what you are going through, to offer him a lawyer leads me to believe that there may have been a conversation, there may have been knowledge, or there may have been some inclination that you had, whether it be his involvement, her location, or something to where in your mind there's guilt. Because you offering him a lawyer is very weird. I know. I know. I... That was still me under the assumption that... I think at one point... No. At one point you guys interviewed me and when you guys showed me the picture of her, I believed the sexual stuff, but I didn't want to believe that he had done anything evil to her. I'm like, no, what if she... What if he did this stuff fine, but what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her i still wanted to believe in his i i believed him i believed his whole story so i was just like i, I kept repeating that part i'm just like what if what if she did get dropped off what if she I got abducted what if she's missing um but that was me assuming that you guys had the wrong guy i wanted to think he was a good guy still but clearly he's not after everything you guys have told me and have shown me i know he's the worst person on this face of the we earth know that right now. now. We know he's a piece of shit now. You know. But you didn't know that then. I didn't. Then you offered a guy who the police suspected, suspected of kidnapping, abducting, assisting the disappearance. You offered him a lawyer. And then we don't have to round table that. You went back to you, what you just said is the sex stuff is fine. It's not That's fine. fine. Hold on. I know every relationship is different, and I know everybody's family is different. I won't ask, but going on your going back on, has he expressed interest in? I'll use the word weird. I'm not going to shame anybody for what they they like, 
different sexual pleasures, different sexual experiences, different kinks that involve things you weren't comfortable with? The only thing he's ever expressed to me was like anal. Okay. Um, he had an anal kink and like butts. Okay. But that was something I was never comfortable with or doing. And I let him know that, like, like that's not like something. It's fine. You guys slept in the same bed together. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. And this is not me coming at you as a person or a bad person because shit happens in the past and the past and the past. We can't change the past. Has he ever expressed to you any Never. Never. Has he ever made these statements about made you feel different? No. Okay. When you guys slept in the same bed together, did you ever wake up and find them cuddling? Did you ever wake up and find them closer than you thought they should be? They would, they would snuggle, yeah. Okay. But I, I, we all snuggle. I didn't think that that was abnormal. So if you guys are sleeping in the same bed and she's in the center, you've woken up and they're snuggling. They're under the same blanket. They're not under the same blanket. No. But just like she's got her own blanket. Spooning for what? Mm. How what is snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling, spooning, big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this, and she would be right here in his in, in the nook. Okay. Um. How do you guys sleep? Do you guys sleep clothed, unclothed? I sleep clothed. clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets. Yes. Everybody. Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. I think I can count on one hand how many times that's happened, and it hasn't been many times that I've allowed her to have a slumber party with him, to be alone in a, in a bed with him. I'm usually around all the time. The detectives would later tell Jen Soto that the sexual abuse of Maddie went back to 2020, that it had been going on for years. If I, knew, if I knew anything, I promise you, I would tell you, like, I am willing to take a lie detector test, whatever the fuck you want, but I don't know anything. He's never mentioned anything. I've never seen any signs. I tried watching her like a hawk. I thought I was doing a good job, but I wasn't. I was oblivious to the, everything. Four years? Minimum. And that's just how fat, that far back the clown goes. <laughs> and I, I find it hard to believe for me that you were so worried about how many pills she took at night, but not where she slept or what relationship she was His interest in her. I thought we were all safe. I thought because than that. He hadn't shown me anything so far. Like, everything seems fine. Like, he seems He treats you? In his mind? Remember Stefan Stearns mentioning that Maddie had crushes on boys, and there was one boy she mentioned that Sunday night? The detectives also questioned Jen Soto about how much Stearns knew about these crushes. If anything, she was a little bit more open with Stefan because she told him about a boy she had a crush on. Okay. And um, that his name was. Um, she described him and Stefan's like are you aware that she has a crush on a boy I said no he's like yeah she told me that he's tall and um, that she likes his fluffy hair um, that she likes his fluffy hair when was this? do you remember when this conversation happened? within the last week sometime but I'm not oh, sure oh okay like within, so we saw, like, so within a week of that Sunday. How did he take it? Was he like, and I want you to think back before you know things you know now, like did he seem concerned about her? Did he seem excited for her? Like she's, she's starting to, you know, be a kid and have crushes and everything else. Like he, seemed, was... he seemed happy for her. Okay. Um, he's like, yeah, did you hear this? This is super cute. And I was like, oh. I hadn't. She hadn't told me. And I, and I wondered, I'm like, why didn't she tell me? Why'd she tell him and not me? Like, I want to know who she's got a crush on. But maybe it's because I told her she, she, she had a rule. She wasn't allowed to date for a few years. The interview then gets into a suspicion or the possibility that Maddie might have been pregnant. She didn't die naturally. She didn't overdose. She didn't have a heart attack. We circled murder on Monday. Something had to cause that. He's been having unrestricted sexual activity for a long time. He's getting what he wants from her, probably from you, and who knows whoever else, right? So it's not like he woke up or went to bed Sunday and he was like, you know what, I'm done with this. 
that I'm gonna kill her. Something happened. People don't just wake up and like, you know what? They leave people, they break up with people, but usually things cause people to snap. Now what, you know what, and I'm in trouble, or I feel like I'm gonna, or him being out, we can go even worse. She's pregnant. That's what questions last night led me to believe when we started talking about her period. I was told that her and her friend, and granted, I'm, I'm, I'm male, never had a period, but that somebody found it weird that they were no longer on the same cycle. Could be different because she's a teenage girl. Could be that she missed her period. Have you ever found a pregnancy test at home that wasn't yours? I have two underneath the kitchen, the bathroom sink, but I haven't seen if they're still there or not. The detective's priority at this point is finding Maddie. That's all they care about. They start pressing Jen Soto to see whether she knows where Maddie's body is hidden. What do you think made him snap? I, I keep hearing Tell me your theories, because here's the deal. We don't go home until she's found. No, I know, I so know. So what are your theories? What I've heard is, what if, what if she upset him and threatened to tell me and say that she was going to tell me and he needed to shut that down? That's the only thing. What do you think? The detectives then turn up the heat on Jen Soto again. Even if they believe Stearns killed Maddie, they need to find her body as quickly as possible because at this point, she's been in the elements since Monday and it's Friday. That's more than four days. Time is of the essence and her body is decomposing and vital evidence can be lost. The detectives call out Jen Soto, telling her she has consistently prioritized Stefan Stearns over her missing daughter. But outside of you reporting her missing, and I may be wrong, I haven't been involved in all aspects of it, but you have not shown me one bit that you prioritized her over him. And that sucks. Not because we're working our asses off for your family, not because we have people out there sweating their asses off for your family, but because I feel like all I care about is your care is to make sure Stefan doesn't get held accountable. Well, I don't care anymore. Anymore? Because we're being because I'm not being nice. No. But up until Thursday, it was okay that she gave him a no big deal. Get a lawyer's. No, it wasn't. It wasn't okay. I was, honestly, I saw that and I was in shock. And I don't know why my first reaction was to tell him to get a lawyer, but I saw that and I was in shock and I was just like, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. <sighs> it's easy to believe it now. We showed you pictures of it. You can't deny it anymore. Mm -hmm. you, the sex was okay, the murder's not. At least, you, no, at least that makes sense. No, that's okay. I want to know what it is. And not because I think you're a bad parent, not because I think you're a bad person. Dead or alive, she's missing. Her body is out there. Her body needs to be recovered so she can have a proper burial, a proper funeral. She needs to be laid to rest. Your family needs to be able to mourn her. And we need that information. That is life. That is not life of the law. That's not life of the sheriff's office. That is common decency. That is what she deserves. That is what you deserve. That is what your family deserves. The detectives again press Jen Soto on how she believes Maddie died. They basically ask her to piece this together as if she's writing a fiction book. So I don't know if it's possible he, he gave her something and she was drugged. In, in those photos that you showed me where you're saying she's dead, maybe she was drugged. But if she is dead, and it was done upstairs, I could just only imagine that he choked her. I don't know how else you would kill someone and not leave a mess. How do you think he got her out? I have no idea because roommates come in and out of the house at any given point in the morning and we don't know their schedules. They can come in at any time. Documents would later reveal that Maddie was strangled to death. 
We still don't know whether she was pregnant. Again, the detectives pressed Jen Soto on where she thinks Stearns could have dumped Maddie's body. 192 seems to me like the easiest place he could have dumped her or like figured out where to put her. Unless she was in my trunk the whole time and he went to Northport. The trunk of your car? Yeah. Didn't you drive your car at some point? I did. you guys sit in your car at some point? I did. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I would have probably smelled something, but I didn't. So I'm, I'm just trying to think. I'm like, did he stash her body in Northport? No, I don't think so. He's probably hiding something or destroying something. So I guess 192 would probably be the most important right now. Being in your trunk is oddly specific. The only reason I say that is because from what you guys have told me, he went directly from the hotel to Northport. I don't think he made any stops anywhere in Kissimmee or anything first and then went to Northport. I'll get back to why what Jen Soto said about 192 is important in just a moment. The detectives wrapped up the interview. I don't want you to think I was purposely an asshole to you. No, I know. You're right. doing your job. Like I told you, like the sheriffs have probably reached out. You've been in communication with numerous people here. Those are my opinions and my opinions only. They don't reflect Sheriff Mina, the chief of PD, Kyle, any other detectives who talked to you. All right. I personally don't know. All right. We will be here all weekend. We will be here all night. My only hope is that you truthfully did not lie to us, you truthfully don't know where she was, and that you truthfully did not know what was happening to her. Yeah. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that everything you talked about today in this interview is true and correct? Yes. Did you lie to me or the detective at any time? No. Okay. Do you currently know or have you ever been aware of where her body has been since Monday? Did you have any Were you aware at any time, whether it be the most recent instance or the first instance, organization sexually by Stefan? Okay. At this time, you do not know where Stefan went on 192? I don't. You do not know where he went in Northport? I do not. And you have at no time this week had any conversations with Stefan where he disclosed what he did? The story that we talked about of what at one point we discussed that she could potentially have been in the trunk on the way to Northport. Yeah. Is that information you, you know to be true or an assumption? An assumption. Maddie's body was found later that day after this interview on a farm off of Hickory Tree Road, which is off of 192, which Jen Soto had mentioned several times. Stearns had mentioned it too. Stephen Stearns was indicted at the end of April for Maddie's murder. He has pleaded not guilty to that charge and the sex crimes charges. He'll be back in court next month. And I want to be very clear here. Jen Soto has not been charged with any crimes related to her daughter's death, disappearance or the sexual abuse of Maddie. And that's it for this episode of Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Thanks so much for being with me. I'll see you back here next time.